feel, can feel you, those are not feel even in this presence right here. Because the presence of God is here. You can be filled right in this presence if you desire to be filled and pray in other tongues. This is the atmosphere that you can be in to receive. Our help is here. Our help is here. He ministers from the inside out. He speaks from the inside out. Things he really want to talk to you about. When we get quiet like this, he can share. If you listen, he will show you things. He'll show you things. He'll minister to you. He'll give you direction. We were going to do this later, but I just, you know, I keep hearing the Lord say it. So if anybody here that's, that has any sickness in their body or anything, I want you to come up to the front real quick. Any sickness in your body, any sickness in your body, just come to the front real quick. We're just going to pray, just touch and agree. Just kind of social distance yourself. Just kind of spread out a little bit. You know, nobody needs to touch you or anything. Just, we're just going to touch and agree with you. While the Lord is here, while the presence is here, amen, while his presence is here. No, let them stand where they want to stand. Yeah, all right. It's going to be a lot of people. Just know in his presence, in the Lord's presence, Bible says fullness of joy at his right hand are forever pleasures. His, he, his presence is here. Everything we need is in his presence. Jehovah Rapha is here. The healer, the healer is in the room. Those of you believe in God for any kind of healing, look, I'm, uh, anything, addictions, you need a breakthrough. I want you to come down. You need a breakthrough in, in any area of your life. I want you to come down as well. When you come down, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Everybody, lift your hands to the Lord. Because you're going to receive from him. Those that's in the chair, lift your hands to the Lord as well. We're just standing in the gap this morning. Let's come in agreement. We may not know what the struggle is for our brother or our sister Amen. But we're going to come in agreement this morning. The Bible says, there are any sick among you, call for the elders. I am the elder that's here. Praise God. The senior pastor. You have elders as well. There's any sick among you, call for the elders. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We're going to lay hands on you in the spirit this morning. The Lord is going to minister to you this morning. And I want you to receive your healing, whatever it is. I want you to receive your healing when we pray. At the time we pray, the Bible says, at the time that you pray is when you believe. You don't wait to see it to believe. At the time we pray is when you believe. So you have to believe before you receive. Amen. So Father God, we pray right now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. God, we call these individuals healed this morning by your stripes, Father. They are healed this morning, whatever they're struggling with, whatever the ailment may be, whatever the illness may be, whatever the doctors may have told them, glory to God, whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord this morning. Father, we curse sickness at its root right now. And God, we thank you, Father, for a breakthrough in their body. We thank you, Father, God, for giving them a new heart. A new liver, glory to God. We thank you for giving them, God, new functions in their body. Brand new, Father, as they're reaching up to heaven. Everything we need is in your presence, God. We thank you for the blood pressure coming down, glory to God. We thank you for cholesterol levels.
coming down, glory to God. We thank you in advance right now, Father, for all things being normal, Father, in their bodies right now, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we know you can do it. God, you did it for the woman with the issue of blood. Lord, you did it for blind by the mares. Glory to God. Lord, you did it for Naaman. Glory to God. You healed him of leprosy. Hallelujah. You did it for Peter's mother when she had a fever, God. God, I pray that you would do it. Do it for these individuals, God. Give them a breakthrough this morning. Heal every addiction, Father. Every affliction, God. Everything that's standing in their way, Father. From their next level, Father. We thank you for doing it. Minister to them right now. Minister to them right now like only you can. Lord, we thank you for doing it, Father. We thank you. We thank you for doing it, Father. We thank you, Lord. Heal broken hearts this morning. Heal broken hearts this morning. Minister to the young this morning. Minister to those, Father, who have stretched forth their hands towards you this morning. Have your way in their lives. Give them what they stand in need of. The devil is a liar. And Lord, we thank you for your truth, which is in the word of God. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. We thank you for breakthroughs, God. We thank you for your testimonies, God that will go forth, Father, from you, Lord. We thank you in advance for doing it, Father. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Now, won't you praise him like you got it? Don't praise him like you got it. Don't praise him like you already got it. Don't praise him like you already received it. Go ahead, praise him like you already healed. Come on, move that area that you couldn't move before. Hallelujah. Do what you couldn't do before. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Receive what the Lord has deposited into you on this morning. And don't let the adversary steal what the Lord gave you. Don't allow the adversary to steal what the Lord gave you. If you believe you receive, then you receive it. Don't you let go. Don't you let go, regardless of what anybody says. Don't you let go of what you receive. Glory to God. Come on, go and shout to the Lord. You can return back to your seats. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God had us praise him first <laughs> before he sent the before he sent what he needed us to have. We praised him first and then he gave us what we stood in need of. Just like he did in the Bible. Something supernatural happens when you praise God. And I shared this, I believe, on last week, how. Huh? When I experienced the Lord and how he ministered to me and how he had to deal with my flesh. One of the things, you know, the Bible says no flesh can glory in his presence. When we come into the presence of God, we must denounce our flesh. Don't let your flesh control you while you're in God's presence. Don't let your flesh tell you what you're not going to do and what you can't do. The atmosphere is set and designed for you to get a breakthrough. For you to get a breakthrough. All the songs, everything is designed for you to get a breakthrough in your life. So you won't leave here the same way you came. Don't you leave here the same way you came. Don't you leave here. I ain't going to preach today. I'm going to have to say this the next week. The, the message message. Don't you leave here the same way you came. No, when you come in God's presence, you got to give God everything he, that he deserves, like Constantina said. He is looking for you to praise him and worship him and adore him. And what the adversary would do, he would try to stop you. He would try to hinder you. And that's why the Bible tells us to renew our mind. Come on, get my Bible real quick. Go ahead, let me, let me give us a, a mini message real quick. Come on, sit down. Come on, sit down real quick. 
Let me just talk to you this morning. Because I know that, that God, God has a plan for our life. And God do things in excellence. And because we serve an excellent God, there's training and there's things that happen in the midst of us because he wants to take us somewhere. You're on a journey with God. You're not just here by happenstance. You're not just here because somebody invited you. You got to know that you're on an assignment that God has brought you here because he wants to speak to you. He wants to say something to you. He wants to do something in your life. And a lot of times to get you to do something you never had, he will put you in places and put you under people, amen, that will push you. I'm a pushy pastor. <laughs> when I say I'm pushy, yeah, man, I look, no, I'm pushing you into your purpose. I'm pushing you into the presence of God. Why? Because somebody pushed me. Somebody pushed me. You, everybody, we love these athletes. We love all these entertainers. We love them. But what they all would tell you is they had somebody in their life who would champion their causes, who would push them past the point of being tired and expired. You need somebody in your life like that. If you don't have that, then that's why you'll remain comfortable even in the kingdom. Come on, you may be an athlete and you out there and the coach is pushing you further you can go. You don't stop. You don't just quit. You try to give it your all. Don't come in the kingdom and give us any less. Don't come into the kingdom because we're going to push you the same way. But it's for spiritual benefits. That's why when you come into the kingdom of God, the Bible, the first thing the Bible says is that we have to renew our mind. Because if you don't renew your mind, you're sitting up under things that you don't understand. And it takes time for pastors to have to get you to a place where God wants to take you. Get you to a place until you get understanding so you can begin to operate by faith. Amen. Meaning when we didn't have the words to the songs, you could just stand there and look at us. Because you didn't, you didn't know how to buy in. You couldn't get in, get in with us. But then we put the words up, why? So that you can feel a part, so you wouldn't feel like you're left out, especially visitors. You may not know all the songs we sing, but we put them up so you can feel like you can get involved with everybody else, so nobody can feel uncomfortable or like, wow, I don't know that song. No, we have the words there, so you can say it. And you got to say it by faith. The only person to keep your mouth closed is the devil. The devil is the only one that will shut your mouth doing praise and worship. Keep your mouth closed and bottled up saying nothing. And everything you need is in your mouth. Your breakthrough is in your mouth. It's what you say. You can actually be saying something that's going to impact your life. Faith comes by hearing, yes. But then I must respond to faith by doing something. So after I've heard, I'm hearing the word. And the, and the songs are telling me to do something. I need to do it. Then I need to do it. And get outside of myself because God wants to do so. Let me read this in Romans real quick. It's a familiar scripture. It's familiar scripture. Should I do this one first or the other one? Let me do the other one first. Let me, do, let me, let me look at, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, let me just do Romans 12. Yeah, because we could be somewhere else. I don't have the time to do part two this morning. Not me, because I have you here for another an hour at least. And so, uh, and not that it's bad, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, sometimes church people, you know, you know we, we so quick to run out to church. We put the past on a time schedule. Folks start putting their notes up and everything. All like what? <laughs> now I'm not that past that pay attention to you. You can stop writing, put your phone up, your notes up. That don't move me. I move by the spirit. <laughs> and what and what the Lord has told me, I need to share today. So I'm not moved by that. But folk will do that. You know what I'm saying? You know your body language talks more than you talk. And while we're up here, we can see so much more in the spirit than what, you, what we can see by sitting in those seats. I can see that you're broken. I can see that you need healing. I can see that you need salvation. I can see that you need deliverance. But you will sit there and still walk out those doors during the altar call because your flesh won't let you move. If I ain't think you'll be embarrassed, I'll snatch you right out your seat. But, but oh, the, who the pastor think he is? No, who you think God is? God see you. 
You don't think God see you? God see you. We are the under shepherds to Jesus. You think he won't reveal stuff to us? If we're your spiritual parents, of course he will. Won't he reveal it to your natural parents? He going to keep us in the dark? I'm sorry. I want to tell you, no, he won't. We're not in the dark. But you have to come freely. Give you an opportunity. Come on your own. Because then, it's, then you mean well because then you're going to do something about it because it was your idea versus somebody else's idea. Amen? Amen. This is one of the most critical scriptures in the Bible that, 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 that needs to happen to believers when they come into the kingdom, Romans 12 and 1. Very familiar scripture. That just dropped in my spirit when I was standing here because even to receive healing, a breakthrough, every, everything that God wants for you is in the renewing of your mind. If you don't renew your mind to the word, then you can't get to where God is taking you. Even receiving Holy Spirit, everything I'm talking about, to get to where God is taking, you got to get outside your mind. That mind has to be renewed to the final authority in your life. The Bible must be the final authority. What is the final authority? Who has the say so in your life? Who has the authority and the power, amen, to, to influence you? Whatever, whoever that is, if it's outside the Bible, they can lead you in the wrong direction. But if it's the Bible, then the Bible has the final authority in your life. Look at Romans 12 and 1. Media, I, don't, I know y'all don't have none of these scriptures I'm going to share with you today. But look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Man, we're going to have to do part two next week, y'all. Damn. I was ready too, boy. Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. I kept looking at the time like, I, I, I think I can do it. I see. <laughs> Lord, I said, you already know once you get started. Say, don't, eat, don't, 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 don't fool yourself. Yes, I do, I do try to be uh, mindful of your time. I do. I'm, I, I'm not that pastor. I do. But you know, it's like you just want, to, you want, to, you want people to grab what you're giving. We don't have a lot of time, saints. Young people, we don't have a lot of time. We just don't have a lot of time, y'all. I don't know if y'all see it, but we just don't have a lot of time. Well, they've been saying that forever. Yeah, but the thing that's happening now wasn't happening then. Things have changed. There's been a shift then. We're, we're living in a different day, y'all. You mean you ain't hungry for God? And the church should be lined up right around the block. But to get a pair of Jordans, it'll be. New sneakers come out, folk, lining up around the block, round around the block, waiting on the, the latest, the, just to give somebody $500 for the latest PS5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. iPhone, iPhone 31. All these natural things that add no spiritual benefit to our life, we go hard for them. But the thing that that we really need to go hard for, we don't. The thing we really, we got got friends of ours that's just dying and going to hell. And we ain't saying nothing. We done went through the whole If You, Not You series and just, it's just gone now. That's old with, well, he not talking about soul winning no more, so. You know, what really scares me is, is that there are going to be believers that Jesus is going to say, I never knew. That scares me as a pastor. It's, he's not just talking to pastors. Don't, don't, don't let because it says you taught the word. Well, hey, you teach the word, so he ain't talking about me. <laughs> he just talk about, in general, people who have not really received him, who really don't know him. How do we know you don't know them? Your actions. It's not what you say. Romans 12. I guess the media could have it by now. Chapter 1, verse 1. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brother, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies, present your bodies, as a living sacrifice. Present your bodies as a 
living sacrifice. We all know in the Old Testament, our bodies was presented, not our bodies, but animals that they had to bring for the atonement of sin, different sins, a pigeon or a dove or bull or ram, or depending on what the nature of the sin or the sacrifice or, or what was going on, it determined what you should bring as a sacrifice. But in these days, you know, we're not, we're not putting animals on the altar. God said, no. I need you to get yourself on this altar alive, a living. I need you to sacrifice yourself, meaning you got to die to yourself to live for God. You have to die to yourself to live for God. How are you going to live for God if you don't die to yourself? Self is always in the way when you're trying to please God. Self will never get out of the way if you don't move it out of the way. You got to move self out of the way. That's why God said, look, I beseech you. I, look, they're saying, look, I urge you. That word beseech, I urge you. I, it's an urgency. I urge you, man. Like, this is serious. Look, by the mercy of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable God with your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. But be transformed. How are we going to be transformed? By renewing of your mind. Once I renew my mind, then it says that you, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. People don't know the will of God for their life because their mind ain't renewed. We keep running around trying to figure out what the will of God is, but we don't want to renew our mind. Because we don't want to go through steps, first grade, second grade. You think God's going to skip us. He's not. He's not that parent that's going to skip you. There's things you must learn in the kingdom, and you're not going to learn them unless you learn them. You have to apply these principles to your life. He's not going to skip you. He's not just going to skip you. Now, you can skip yourself. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Yeah, he said, yeah, I never. You remember, you repeat, God, with God, you said you'd never put more on me than I could bear, even though he talked about blessing. And if we could put some on us, that we, it would be what we put on ourselves. God said, I didn't put that on you. You did. You put that on you. Some of us are not patient enough. Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable. It's a good and acceptable, listen, and perfect will of God. I want the perfect will of God. Each of us should desire the perfect will of God, not just God allowing us to do something. Not a permissible will. Not, not just because we just knocked on the door so hard you know, that he just opened it. You know, I remember I was crying in jail one time years ago, years ago, years ago. I was, you know, just, just wanted to come home, you know, just, just wanted to come home. You know, my, my baby mama, she was my wife, she was my baby mama, you know, and I uh, just, just wanted to come home, wanted to just be with family and all that, wanted to get out so bad, wanted to be home so bad, so bad, so bad. But really, as I think about it, get out for what? You can go back to do the same thing. And God knew it. But I cried so much. Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, mean, I shouldn't be here. Yeah, you know, and, da, da, da. and then I get let out and then just and to come back to jail seven days later after being locked up for about eight, nine months. How did I come back to jail that quick? I wasn't ready to be released. But the crybaby in you sometimes, in me. The crybaby in us, because we want what we want sometimes, and then we get it now, we don't want it. I wanted it so bad, but I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle the freedom. I thought I was ready, but I won't. And, and God showed me that by me coming back seven days later. And then I stayed incarcerated another month, and I got serious with God, truly repented. And that's what some of us need to do. We, need to, we got communion today. Truly repent. Amen. Amen. Repent means to turn away, to turn around. Now, repent doesn't mean that I'm just going to let it go today. Right. Repent doesn't mean I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to do this for a few hours right. or, or, you know, just for this moment. No. When you turn away from something, you have turned away from it for good. Yes. He talks about in the scripture how the dog will return to his own vomit. No, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to be like dogs turn, returning back to our own vomit. We don't want to go back to where we came from. 
So I believe God wants us to do something different. In order to receive Holy Spirit, we must be saved. Every tongue ain't a tongue of the Lord. Don't you see them actors acting like they're praying in tongues when you see the movies? Oh, okay. I just wondering. They're not praying in the spirit. They're mocking the spirit. We don't have to mock the spirit. We're in church. We're born again. All we have to do is receive. We have to receive this free gift that God has given us. But we have to get past our head. And our own thoughts and our own mind. Because our own head and our own thoughts will tell us that's crazy, that's stupid. What you're saying doesn't mean anything. And I had a guy that talked me out of it. I didn't pray for about four months because he knew more Bible than me. You see why it's important to know the word? Somebody can use this same book and make you think you're not saved, the God you serve is not real, the tongues you're talking in not true. Only because they know more than you. This book belongs to believers. And we, if we don't eat this word, then an unbeliever or somebody who don't even believe the book will come and because they've eaten it and eaten the book and they've given and they've, they've uh, learned some things because knowledge only puffs up. Right. It's just information. Right. Right. It don't mean nothing if it's not applied. Nope. That's right. That's right. It's just information. And they can apply it if they're not saved, but we can, but they'll use the book to show you how it's not real. And so we must make sure that we, as the body of Christ, that we're in this word. And we're in this word on a daily basis, not, not, not being religious, but having a relationship with God because we love him so much, we want to get to know him. I don't need a word from God. I don't have to chase prophets. I don't need a word from the Lord. I have 66 books. I mean, words are good. They're edifying. But I don't need it. I don't have to chase after the latest prophet to try to get a word. What? You got 66 books full of God's word, but you never read them. You would get in these words right here, your life will change. Your life will be transformed. You don't need another word. This, all this will be enough. But we have to do the first thing, and that is we have to repent for our sins. We have to repent for our sins so that God can come in and give us the new life that he wants to give us. There are some of you today, and I know I didn't teach on Holy Spirit, but, there, but we still, we, hey, we still going to do the altar call for Holy Spirit. And if you ain't get filled, some of y'all, you know, people come up weeks. It takes time to get filled. If you, it, this is why it takes time to get filled. Let me share with you this. It takes time to be filled because until you receive the information that you're listening to, faith comes by hearing. And so when I receive Jesus, I just receive Jesus. And in the natural, I think I don't have to do anything. That's why we think receiving Jesus is easier than receiving Holy Spirit. But it's not. The same faith it took me to receive Jesus, the same faith it takes to receive Holy Spirit. But sometimes the faith it takes to receive Jesus is just me saying something and not doing nothing. But then I got to do something over here and now I'm shooken up like, what? I got to actually, yeah, you got to actually use that faith. It's the same thing over here. Like denying yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. That's, the, that's, that's receiving Jesus. If you haven't denied yourself, are you saved? You got to answer that for yourself. You, please, you got to answer that for yourself. You haven't denied yourself, you still living your best life? I'm saying without the Lord. <laughs> you living your best life, your life is all about you. You have to check your salvation out. You have to. This is serious. Serious. If, if, you, if I'm accountable for you, I want you to get to heaven with rewards. There are so many rewards that we're going to receive in heaven. Man, heaven is much. Man, this is nothing. This is nothing. Everybody want to go to heaven, but they don't want to leave earth. Don't be so stuck to this right here, what you see right here. All this stuff is going to fade away, y'all. This stuff is going to disappear after a while. It's going to be burnt up in the smoke. It's not going to last. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. Amen. So there's a home for us in heaven. And there's, and there's a government and structure in heaven. We got a new heaven, a new earth. There's, there's so much structure there. 
It, it, we're not going to be just sitting on, you know, people make it so boring. That's why people, you know, it's like, you know, we're not going to be floating on clouds and just sit, sitting around playing, uh, what you call that thing? Is that a harp? Yeah, all day long. <laughs> Stop looking at those commercials and stuff. Everything you see was made by what you can't see. So if what we see right now in the natural, you would like it, guess what? Not all of it, but heaven, yeah. heaven is an, yeah. is an image. This was made by heaven. Right. What we see came out of the spirit. God, believe me, God has a sense of humor. He's not a stuck-up God. Right. I would love to live with him forever. Right. And I plan to. Right. And you should plan to. Right. The problem is I'm not in heaven right now. If all of us got saved and went to heaven, that's something different. Instantly. We save, we go. But we're, it's not happening like that in a lot of cases. So if I got to live in this earth, I need Holy Spirit. I need to be able to deny my life and walk after the Lord. Because I need to be an example now. And God wants us to be examples, saints. He wants us to be examples to all that's around us. We should all be bringing somebody into the kingdom of God. Amen. Bringing somebody in the kingdom of God. Amen. Using our life as a witness. Mm -hmm. Using our life as a voice to speak. Because what other, what other life is it? What other life is it? No. You got to live. You got to eat. You have to have a bit. All that business and all that stuff don't get in the way of your relationship with God. Right. Unless you let it. That's why the rich young ruler, he had, an issue with, he had an issue with Jesus. Because he allowed the riches that he had to take the place of the Lord. And when that happens, you know, he lived in a, in a backslidden state, even though he said he kept all the commandments from a youth. He said, I've done everything. He's talking to Jesus now. It's like, like Jesus don't know everything. <laughs> like Jesus can't find something that you're not doing. You talking to Jesus, you talking to the Son of God, and you, you go, hey, I've done all of that. I've kept all of that since my youth. I've done all of that. Jesus right. like, oh, okay. Well, then sell everything you got <laughs> and give it to the poor. Huh? What? Hold on. <laughs> but he said, then you'll find treasure. It's a greater good. It's a greater good that God was looking for. The treasure had him was the principal. The treasure had him, so God is not telling everybody that's in business to go, to go give away all your money. But when the treasure have you, he wants, he wants to flip-flop that thing because he knows that, remember what he told us? He said uh, um, that, uh, that we shouldn't serve God or we got, we got to make a decision between whether serving God or what? Mammon, which is money. He put money right up there with his relationship with him, having a relationship with him. Why would he put money up there? He didn't say the devil. He said money. Because he knew that that's what's happening in the earth today. It's a spirit of greed. Money is the God of this world. And because people are so greedy, I'm still alive? Okay. <laughs> because people are so greedy, because people are so greedy, they do a lot of things. Amen. And don't care about people. They, they care about money. You know, I, I did, uh, I used to do, uh, I did dr uh, adult drug treatment court. I did, a, I, I did a couple times in Henrico and in, uh, in Richmond City. And um, I believe in being free. Jesus, you know, he spit in one person's hand, got them free. I mean, he spit in his hands and put on their eye. You know, he may lay hands on somebody else. Somebody, you know, I mean, there's a plethora of ways, amen, to to get whatever healing breakthrough you need. But there's only one way to get to salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ. And so when we share about how to get to, into the kingdom, then we have to be truthful with people in spite of things that they may be going through, in spite of things they may be faced with. Some people will stay so long connected to uh, these false gods and these man-made things that set up and designed to keep them at a place, you know, where they just constantly completing a cycle instead of getting deliverance. Amen. And so when, when the deliverer shows up, you know, my wife and I, we did substance abuse ministry for about 11 years, and we had 
We had DSS. I say all their names because it's all, I mean, you know, everything I'm going to say to you is true anyway. You know, Department of Social Services, Richmond Department of Social Services contacting us because they didn't know what to do. We, uh, and uh, the RHBA, who didn't, they didn't know what to do with all these drug addicts. Rubicon, it is, it's a revolving door. But then they caught us on a program, on a show, on TV, you know, and people are getting healed and delivered and free at our meetings. Heroin addicts, crack addicts, whatever. What, you know, we dealt with addiction, period, not just drug addiction, any addiction. And so, um, yeah, so they called on us, but they didn't want Jesus. But then what you want me to give you? A program, some steps. Well, let me, show you, let me show you some steps. The first step is just like everybody else's step. Commit. The first step is that to come to yourself and admit the challenge. Everybody say that. But the second one that we do is now you got to get saved. Now we want to, you got to commit to God because everything else I'm going to say about knowing yourself, amen, principle for change and everything else I go in is going to take you to, be, to know the spirit of God and the presence of God. Otherwise, I'm talking to an empty shell. And once I get them to believe the word of God, get saved, guess what? They walk right into their deliverance. That's right. Amen. That's right. The only reason people are not free today is because they don't want to be. Right. And it may, hey, it may take some programs. If you, I'm not talking about Christ-centered programs. And no use just getting drugs off of me if I still got a nasty attitude, still cussing my wife out and my husband, still beating up on my kids, you know, not going to work. It ain't a drug problem. It's a sin problem. If we deal with sin, we can deal with everything. God wants to deal with sin. He wants to deal with the sin in your life this morning. He wants to deal with the sin in my life this morning. That's why we receive him as Lord and Savior, because he wants to deal with the sin. He paid the price for that bad boy. All you got to do is receive the finished work, the price that was already paid, and you can walk and go free. Nothing should have you bound when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to believe it. You just have to believe it. So I want to get you, I want to see if... Uh, if those of you are there here today, I want to get you saved today if you want to be saved. Listen, if you want to receive Holy Spirit, you must be saved. You want to receive Holy Spirit, you must be saved. You must be saved. You must be born again. You must be born again. Born of the water, born of the Spirit. 